Over the years, I've taken a few different swings at making a preset or a plugin for DaVinci Resolve for TikTok or YouTube Shorts or just short form vertical content. There were multiple different ways to do almost anything that you want to do in Resolve. So there were multiple different like options and methods that I built sort of presets around. Um, but today I'm releasing a new free preset for short form vertical editing. It uses a relatively new system in Resolve, um, but it has some big strengths if like one or two um, other like specific, not hurdles, but specific ways you need to get your work done. The big features of this preset um, are uh, the highest quality quality in some circumstances and some really exciting flexibility, both with just like the customization built in, but also a super easy way to save any changes you make so that if you fine tune it for your layout or your content, those settings can be super easily saved. So you can just sort of like customize it once and just have all that work ready to go anytime in the future. I'm about to walk you through how the preset works, but that's not the only big thing because while I'm releasing this free preset today, um, it does have all those options for you to customize it. But what if either you're scared of the fusion page valid um, or you just don't want to do the extra work of customizing for your specific desired layout? Well, for the first time, I'm also rolling out a service for fully customized presets and plugins. I have a separate entry over on the store at SterlingSupply.co where you can purchase these same presets, uh, but you have a form to fill out and you can send along either a layout you love or like links to your previous content. And I will fully customize this preset for you so that all you have to do is drop it in Resolve, drop it on your clips, and you're good to go. This is a bit of an experiment, but check the link in the description for any more info about that. But let's hop into Resolve. I have a timeline here, and this is a vertical timeline, but I have two little examples. One is a whole gameplay clip I just grabbed from a shroud, shroud stream. <laughs> And you'll notice I can scale it down and you can see the entire thing, but the default behavior for uh, horizontal clips placed on a vertical timeline is that it will stretch to fill the screen. But if you're to hop into Fusion, you'll notice that it brings in the uh, original source clip here. But we're not going to immediately go into Fusion because the first thing you are going to do uh, with either your power bin master bin selected or just your master bin in your individual project, if you don't have power bins, you can click these three dots and scroll down to show power bins. If you don't know, power bins, super flexible because these bins will appear with all of their subfolders and everything in those folders on whatever new project you create in that same database. So if I'm in my power bins, I come to master and I'm gonna to come to a uh, file import bin. And in this specific location, I have vertical presets.drb. This is a DaVinci Resolve bins file. And if I click this and click import, it will add that subfolder into my power bins. And I have two little things hanging out here. I have a vertical one source and vertical two source. Um, I can't skim those, they have no picture there, but if I select a vertical one source and I select my clip on the timeline, I can right click and go to link to referenced composition. And all of a sudden, my TikTok is edited. Now, the reason this works with this specific clip is because it was the clip I used to build the effect. So it probably won't perfectly space out um, everything if you use this with your clip. But uh, the next step is back to open up the Fusion page. Using this method, you don't have access to this effects panel in the inspector on the edit page. But I tried to keep things simple because with your playhead over that clip, if you just click the Fusion page, you see this group and you see all the nodes of how I made this effect. Now you always have the option to dive in, add any further customization here. I even have some labels, um, but if you click on the group as a whole, now in the inspector, I have a whole bunch of custom controls without you need to fiddling, uh, fiddle around too much looking at specific notes. At the top, I have a link to my website as well as a link to the specific store page if you want to upgrade to a uh, custom preset. But then from there, this is really similar um, to the last TikTok preset I released like generally where you can toggle on that background layer, the gameplay, and then you have sort of like three focus windows. The first focus window I use in these examples just for the face cam. And then you have separate categories down here here, if you want to do something like pull down a saturation on that background image or this like blur strength, if you want like a little more separation or even ramp that up even more. But really important for this is you also have these version numbers up top. If I click through these, you'll notice I have these three different layouts up front. This uh, second one sort of just fills with just the gameplay and the camera. This third one uses all these individual assets. I pull just like random areas of the UI for these focus 
uh, elements down here. So you have some options, you can customize them. And let's just say you do something like get rid of your camera. So it's just your gameplay here on a blurry background. Cool. We need to head back to the edit page and check on one other thing. Because if I do that, this power bin is still open and that is where I pulled in this reference composition to attach it to this clip. But one thing you need to know about power bins generally is that they can store all this information. But as soon as you pull one of these reference compositions or a video clip or a photo to your timeline, it will duplicate whatever that is and just add it to your uh, normal bin structure inside the folder. Whatever media or this reference composition needs to be in this main folder structure to get added to your timeline. So it will copy whatever is in the power bin and then store it back here. And then that is what will technically be applied to your clips. And that's important to know because of what I sort of teased earlier. If I duplicate this clip, get rid of that reference composition. If I now go back to my power bins, and try to do the same thing, add that vertical source back on, link to it, it pulls in that initial version. And also when I go back to my master bin here, I have this vertical one source, which was applied on this first clip, and a vertical one source one, which is uh, the second copy it pulled in to apply to this second clip. So let's say I just love the changes I made on this first clip. If I wanted to store that, I'm gonna get rid of the second one we made. I could copy and paste this from this project bin back into vertical uh, presets on my power bins, but it's also super helpful to just resave this. If I call this like new preset and I had saved this however I want, I can copy that save that back over into this vertical presets. Make sure I copy that vertical presets. I can paste that in and now I have this new preset uh, saved here. And if I go, as I did before, unlink that reference com, we have that original clip. If I select that, select a new preset, right click, link to reference composition, it pulls in the exact state I had this other reference clip saved to. Now that's cool, um, but it does ignore one of the big strengths of referenced compositions. And to show that off, we're gonna look at this other um, stack of two clips, and we're gonna check out vertical two source. Now to link these, I'm gonna select just this top clip and then vertical two source. And if I right click on that, go to link to reference composition, You'll notice, okay, we have that same gameplay footage because that's what I pulled the clip from, but now it pulled in this clip that was above it, which was just a face cam of one of these videos. And it is using that as the face camera. I can hop into Fusion, um, toggle through my options. You see it is just perfectly slid in there. So maybe if you really care about quality and you record your screen and your camera separately, or you have it rigged up anyway to get those two separate sources that you want to edit together, you can use a single preset for that. And if you opt for that custom presets options, we can use as many different clips as you use on regular basis. Maybe you have cameras all over the place constantly recording, and if you want to show you know five different angles at once, we can do that. Of course, I'm talking about those uh, custom presets, but the other big pro is that um, you can just see how this is built in Fusion. I always want my presets to be sort of a learning tool for people who want to dive deeper into Fusion. And you can always, you know, just go node by node, figuring out how things are built um, if, if that's something you're interested in. A few interesting things to note, um, this reference compositions is really flexible for this purpose of like bringing in full resolution files and working with them in Fusion. Um, some other methods that I've used in the past, sort of like crop or pre-compose. Um, so sometimes you lose some resolution. That's all in the weeds Fusion stuff, not super important. Other than to say that this effect, um, if you use 4K source clips, will sort of like process in 4K and actually spit out a 4K image out of Fusion um, that will then, if you are working on a 1080 timeline, that will be scaled down sort of like on the edit page and that sort of processing way. And if your sort of face camera and game cam in this situation are different resolutions, then you might need to fiddle with these settings a little more to make sure everything is lined up. I've had this idea for a while. I really wanted to circle back to this sort of like TikTok or short form editing presets. This is the first time I've created a preset built on like sharing that in bins built on reference compositions. I think that's kind of interesting. And I think this preset can help lots of people. And for those out there who either don't want to do the extra customization work or don't want to learn Fusion and able to do the extra customization work, but still want all the ease of use, I do have those uh, custom presets you can order. And to remind you, I did straight um, put that button right in every free version. So you can click that and it will load up the URL that's over on this screen now. But yes, on the to-do list for a while. I'm happy to get it out. I think it's pretty cool. Hopefully you do too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.